We have a severe thunderstorm watch, which remains in effect until noon local time. That's central time. It does include St. Louis on up to I, along I-55 into Springfield, eventually getting into Chicago. That watch short just uh, south of Chicago there. We'll see how these storms evolve today, but they will be moving off to, to the east. They weakened a bit as they were crossing through northern Missouri, re-energized as they moved into Illinois, and now we're seeing some of that energy get transferred farther to the east, getting a little closer to that 57 corridor between Effingham and Champaign, University of Illinois up there, where we have the storms the strongest right now. They moved through Springfield and I-55. That would take you down to St. Louis. They were producing the biggest threat here were 60-mile-per-hour winds. Hail, a, a component with it, with this specific uh, tornado, a severe thunderstorm warning, still about quarter size hail associated with it. We'll see. The, the storms themselves, though, when you see that more uh, linear pattern, M Marissa, we, we have that moving east. That's going to be an indication that we could have some damaging winds. They'll eventually, here's the Indiana state line, Terre Haute, right along I-70. Uh, all signs point to those continuing pushing off to the west. You know, this east. is an area they're familiar with getting these quick moving storms that yeah. can bring some damage. Some of them, the severe thunderstorm warnings, have carried that tornado possible. So we'll keep an eye out for that. This one over Shelbyville, this one does not have tour possible. But even the threat, as Stephen mentioned, of 60 mile per hour winds, when you have the threat of an inch in diameter hail, the wind could pick up that hail and push it push it sideways. So get away from the windows, interior part of the home. Um, they are moving fast, and that can work in our favor. Wait till you head out on the road. These are pushing over major interstates. Right now, it looks like we're approaching I-65 there, and you can see that movement. You know, it's, it's, a, it's pushing west, but the orientation of this line is more southwest to northeast, and you're seeing some of the heavy rain associated with some of that, a lot of lightning. And lightning can be well out ahead of the storm. So if you're thinking, I'm going to go out for that walk with the dog, but the sky's looking a little dark to your west, wait a second. You don't want to be caught up in the winds that are out ahead of this, as well as that lightning. St. Louis, you were under a severe thunderstorm warning earlier. That expired. But look, we could be seeing some of these storms reignite. And that's going to be what you want to be ready yeah. for. A timestamp on that, guys. We're heading it's, into the afternoon evening. It's a messy afternoon in St. It is. And that, yeah. that rain that's going through Illinois right now, you talk about Rensselaer, uh, right on the highway. It, it might not be severe, but you're right, man. We've got blinding rain on those highways happening right now. And it's a quick mover for sure, but that rain is coming down very, very hard. So you cannot be on the roads trying to go through this. And then later today, this refires up here and specifically warned for not just tornadoes, but three-inch size hail as a possibility right across that region that's in the darker shade of maroon. So this will be firing up later this morning and really getting in through the uh, probably early afternoon. We'll start seeing the initiation going right through the afternoon hours and the evening hours. So here's the timing on this. Thursday about 1 o'clock. Storms already kind of bubbling up right around Oklahoma. We'll run this right through till about 6 p.m. Those could be the supercells ahead of the cold front. You can see we're now we're working in Arkansas. We're rolling in areas like northern Mississippi. Uh, Middle Tennessee will get it later on tonight right through the Mississippi Valley. Watch that thing press into northern sections of Alabama, ultimately through Georgia by early tomorrow morning. Tornado threat is going to be big. In fact, it's actually been upgraded to account for the more sunshine that we're seeing and the instability that's going to happen. You can see the polka dotted shade areas right here. That's a sign that we will see strong and destructive tornadoes as a possibility. So anything EF2 or more. So you're talking 130 mile per hour winds out of these things or more, and that will be later this afternoon. Little Rock, you drive for most of the day, unfortunately. Wish you had more sunshine. It wouldn't make it as unstable, but here it comes on strong. Right. That is right in the afternoon to late afternoon, and then when it gets Little Rock, looks like it's overnight. So we could be looking at maybe nocturnal tornadoes. It's not a good thing ever. Possibility there. I mean, we have the, so far this year, I mean, we saw it yesterday, the, the largest hailstone was four inches in diameter, which is softball size, is, is what we have in northern Kansas. If these storms, when they initially develop later this afternoon, let's say it's in eastern Oklahoma, western Arkansas, the potential is going to be there to, to reach this threshold. Bob, you had said that they're out highlighting this area for maybe three-inch yep. large or very large hail. Mm -hmm. The instability is going to be a player. A key ingredient today, if we get the sun out, if we get that surface heating to occur, we do have a supportive jet, but, but that instability, that tongue of instability that we saw, we had temperatures and Springfield reached the mid-70s, upper 70s yesterday in St. Louis and Springfield, Missouri. If we have that instability happen, that lift will occur, and we've got cold air already in place.